that teachers are designers of learning. The challenge that we're faced with today and why we need to move into design mode as teachers is that in the 20th century, it was sufficient that we knew and that kids knew existing knowledge and we passed it along. And that was sufficient and that was teacher's job. We did that very, very well. Um, the shift that has happened in a learning society and a knowledge society is we need to be able to create knowledge, but our young people need to be able to create knowledge as well, which means that we need to know the culture in which those, that knowledge is created in. And school, typically in the past, has not been about that. It's been about taking somebody else's stuff and not building on it, critiquing it, none of that. That was the job of graduate school or the job of a really good kindergarten, but nothing in between. That has moved now into our school system, and that's the space that we're now working in, and it's the space that as teachers, and that's why we've got to work together, um, and our expertise needs to be shared as we bring that along. So um, teachers move into design mode. There was a time, um, and I'd like to think, I'd, you know, I, I know I'm doing this in May, <laughs> coming close to June, um, where coverage was the way we designed, right? I'll cover that curriculum. We'll start in September, we'll go to the end of June, and trust me, in my first years of teaching, Paige, I was so interested, I got more stuff covered in May and June than in any other time of the year, right? And it really felt like the longest yard. And I used to think, just because it came out of my mouth, uh, the kids learned it, or just because I fast-tracked those last pieces, great, it was covered. There was something about it that, uh, felt to me as though I needed to do that, right? Or else I was negligent. Knew that they, kept, they got none of it, but that was it. Um, and I've been a classroom teacher for 25 years, and I now teach the uh, future teachers, but a classroom teacher for a long time. So I actually know this one. I actually know this one too. It's called the Julie Andrews curriculum. Here are a few of my favorite things. And, you know, as in the beginning part of my career, I did a whole lot of Julie Andrews curriculum, right? Oh, so-and-so's got this really neat activity. The kids love it, right? And somehow they were all related. I'd make them relate to each other, right? Particularly when I taught elementary school. Um, I tell you, I never spent so much time dyeing lima beans as I did in elementary school because we were doing frogs, and of course, we had to do math on frogs, too. Um, did they learn anything about frogs? Well, maybe, but you know, I, chances are not. And everything was there, and it was unequal. And, um, and but I had that very activity orientation. Didn't go away when I was high school. In high school, high school students, teachers aren't immune to this. We'll just pull it out of the filing cabinet instead of out of the box. But um, it, you know, we had the same thing. Or we'll flip to the next page in the textbook and stay. You know, yesterday you did odd number questions. Today I'll give you a break. We'll do even number questions. Um, but we had let Pearson or McGraw Hill or one of the textbook publishers, multi-million dollar industries, billion dollar industries, dictate for us what our kids needed to know next. This is not that. That doesn't mean I wouldn't use one of those resources, but I would choose what page, what day, not them. They don't know my students as well as I know my students, nor do they know where we're at. So they don't get to rule, I do. That's how I went to university for so many years. At that time, at least five, four or more, um, not to have a textbook publisher tell me what to do. And so, in terms of the design then, I know I need to really take a good, long, solid look on how people learn. Do I know how people learn? Do I know the latest research on that? Do I have a really good, clear understanding of how people learn? Uh, not that I can't learn more, but I need to stay contemporary in that. Disciplinary knowledge. Where, what's at the edge of my discipline right at this point in time? What are people arguing about? What's keeping things moving in there? Uh, what's the program of studies? Yep, I need to put those in, but I need to map them in. And so I need to be able to cut them apart, rip them up out, put them back together again, pick the pieces that pertain, but it's the piece that comes into my design. Assessment, absolutely. 
absolutely key to being put into there. And then resources, digital resources, uh, text resources, print resource, all the resources that I can bring to that design. When I'm designing for inquiry, I have a whole bunch of things in hand. And it's very circular, and it moves in and out, but I have all of them there. So academic rigor, authenticity, assessment, the reach beyond the classroom, digital technologies, connecting with experts, active exploration, and elaborated forms of communication. And I've thought about every single one of them and bringing them in. On the Galileo website, you'll see the rubric that we created that helps guide teachers in their design for that and just some things to think about.